All right, folks, welcome back to another Budget Jam or Budget Bust. Today, I have another Soundstream amplifier. We are going to find out if the streak of busts for Soundstream is over. Um, we've gone to what they consider their second best line of amplifiers after the Triple X series. That is the Tarantula series, the full size Tarantula, unlike the Tarantula Nano. And for my research, they have not touched the boards yet, yet, in the Tarantula series. So, we have here today, what's been on the market for a couple of years, um, 2000 watt rated amplifier. You can find these for about um, anywhere from, I've seen them as low as $200 and as high as $240, which, if this does its ratings, is a pretty good value. I mean, anytime you can get 2,000 watts in that 200 to 240 range, you're doing pretty good. Um, this, these also are, I think they got some gimmicks on them. Uh, they have some LED lights and everything else that I'll get into here uh, later. But uh, today we are going to unbox this amplifier. We are gonna throw it on our trusty amp dyno. We're gonna find out just how much power this amp really produces. And again, it's a sound stream. Who knows what that number will be? Um, so yeah, so let's unbox this amp. Let's just get right to it. All right, full disclosure, this amplifier was a open box deal uh, from Amazon. However, upon receiving it, I opened up the package and did find out everything inside is in fact brand spanking new. The exterior box, which Amazon did use as a shipping box, did get a little bit beat up, but everything inside, perfect. So now, let's open her up. All right, uh, first thing we get, we have our Soundstream owner's manual. And with it looks like there's a Soundstream sticker in here. Let me get the owner's manual out and see if I can get the ratings here on this amp. I know it's 2,000 watts RMS at 1 ohm. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the 4,000 DL is rated at 4 ohms, 700 watts, 2 ohms, 1,300 watts, and of course 2,000 watts at 1 ohm. And it just says, uh, it's like 0 0.10 uh, THD doesn't give what ohm rating that's at, doesn't give that's what full volume. Who knows? Um, so, anyway, uh, next we got holy cow. Hold on. This, I think I'm in for a surprise on. I'm so excited. Okay, there is a remote base knob cable. And it looks like there's a data link in there as well. What? I can't believe I'm, I might see this. Oh. Yes, Virginia. There is a Santa Claus. This is a Soundstream bass knob that is not El Cheapo. It is metal. I never thought I'd see the day. But I have. Things are looking up. Oh my god. That is tight. I can't believe that. And of course they gave me uh, one extra 35 amp fuse and some mounting screws and a couple of Allen keys. Standard fare. And one really big as hell amplifier. This thing is... These sound streams. You know, tarantulas are big spiders, but they ain't that big compared to everything else. This, this is a mutant spider. Holy cow. Like that mechanical spider at the end of uh, Wild Wild West for you people who are older than 20 years old and remember that crappy movie. Holy cow. Alright, let's get the box out of here. Alright, here it is in all its glory. Definitely not small. Uh, this thing measures in at just a little over 19 inches including the end caps width 
we're looking at about a little uh, about nine and a quarter and height pretty much dead on a little over two inches tall so about two and a quarter tall so this thing is not a tiny amplifier which I would say you don't want to see a tiny amplifier with 2,000 watts unless it's Brazilian so all right let's check out the size of this amp along this side of the amplifier we have our power input terminals our speaker output terminals as well as our fuses and this button this one here which is the LED mode this will allow you to shift between the different modes of the LEDs that are on the top and sides of the amplifier the power terminals that come with this amplifier you know they're pretty disappointing this, this amp is rated to be a 2000 watt amplifier yet I can't even take a 4 gauge reducer and get it past this little ring inside here um, I think you can probably squeeze true 4 gauge wire in there but if you're trying to use a 4 gauge reducer I haven't found one of the numerous ones I have here that can fit it um, so that's a little bit of a disappointment uh, you can fit 8 gauge speaker wire in no problem and the fusing we've got five 35 amp fuses which ought to be plenty for pretty much any 2000 watt amplifier now things that i would recommend at 2000 watts this really should come with a one watt gauge uh, power and ground terminal and soundstream is only giving this four gauge and that's not anything new i think on the t1 6000s i think they also do it on that one as well but don't quote me on it along this side of the amplifier we find our rca inputs and outputs as well as all of our settings um, far over to here of course we have your rca inputs and outputs so this doesn't have strapping over here on these outputs these are true outputs but you can strap two of these together that's with this data link here and uh, right here would be your remote data link as well so pretty cool that you can strap two of these together and of course uh, soundstream does give you plenty of settings you of course have your gain input uh, your phase shift ability um, you have a subsonic filter which is adjustable from 15 hertz to 50 hertz and of course your uh, bass boost 0 to 12 dbs your low pass filter uh, 40 hertz to 220 hertz and of course you could switch between modes if this is uh, the master or the slave right here on this switch okay one of the things that does make this amplifier unique is these leds that are along the top with the tarantula along the sides here and with the sound stream because these are not just one set color so let me just turn some lights off here you can see here I've got it glowing blue right now. Throw a little shade at you. Now how about green? Or red? You're angry because I'm testing another sound stream and you want this red. Or you got a little disco action. Maybe you wanted a different color. Maybe like a tealish blue. Or a funky green yellow or another red or purple or maybe you just want it to kind of play through like this and shift around and then to, then go quick disco there's a lot of different led options if you're into it um me it's 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 gimmicky but i don't know some people like gimmicks it's included with the amp why not all right nothing left to do here but to strap up the soundstream t1 4000 dl up to our trusty amp dyno and find out just how much power this amplifier actually does. The sound stream, it's usually a mystery, but we're gonna solve that mystery right now. I'll see you after the test.
Okay, final thoughts here on the Soundstream T1.4000DL. Well, I gotta say, when I started this video, I did not have a ton of hope for this amplifier based on some of my previous Soundstream tests. Um, Soundstream's been kind of hit or miss for me. You know, we had a hit with that Picasso 5K, and then we had a series of duds. You know, we had that uh, Picasso Nano that did okay, didn't do great. It was still a bust because of the cost per watt. Um, and of course it missed ratings. And then of course we had that big failure with that Tarantula Nano 4 channel. So I wasn't sure what to expect with this one. But my friends, we have a gem here. I mean, we got over 2,100 watts at 14.4 volts, uncertified, um, which I think this amp is rated uncertified. Every single rating that's in the manual, this amplifier does uncertified. Um, I know we only got 1250 uncertified on the two ohm test instead of 1300, but that was at 13.78. When you correct for voltage to 14.4, we're over 1300. So this amp is pretty accurately rated. Um, the certified number, I would have liked to see a little bit higher, um, but it's really not a bad value of an amplifier. Is it the best value? No, it's not the best. I mean, for a few bucks under, because these go for about 215, I would still recommend the Wolfram C2400 over it once it comes out. Um, I still think that the Scar RP2000 for only $15 more is a better value than this one. Even though this one you can strap uh, two of these together that you don't get in the Scar RP. So, I mean, it's in the ballpark. And, I mean, if you like the LED stuff, you know, maybe this is your amplifier. Again, um, it's pretty efficient. I, you know, just completed all the tests here. I did some more tests that you didn't see because uh, I ran them off camera just for consistency's sake. The amplifier is ice cold. Um, you don't really hear of anyone having real problems with these Tarantula 4000s. So they've been out on the market for a few years now. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say these are pretty reliable amps. So nicely done, Soundstream. We have a budget gem. Don't screw it up like you did the Tarantula Nano. Keep, keep this together, please. Don't screw it up. That's all I ask. All right, folks, that's it for me. Thanks for watching again. I'll see you next time. I got more amps to test. All right, taking a look at the guts here. Um, I've seen these guts before. Uh, these guts are the same that's in the dual DA801 uh, or 8001, whatever that one is, that I uh, tested way back uh, around Christmas time. So I do know it's a pretty powerful board. So it'll be interesting to see how this one performs. Um, you know, this one is made in China. This isn't a, the Korean board that's in the Duel. So I do think they probably at one time, um, on the previous years of these sound streams, I think they were made in Korea. And now they've shifted this board production design over to China. Um, we have a little bit of cheaper caps inside. Um, these larger uh, rail caps here are 85 degrees and 1800 microfarad. And these smaller ones here are actually 105 degrees, so it's kind of a mix here. 
Um, one thing that I do not like in here, and this is kind of a warning for you folks if you're going to run this amplifier, these pieces in here, like these toroids, or transformers I should say, they are, they're not very loose, but you can move them with your finger. So that does mean that if when this amp is pounding away and you've got this connected to your box, uh, these are going to move, which could cause something to break off. So um, if you're going to mount it to your sub box, use some type of isolation pad to cut down on the vibration, um, or just don't connect it to your box at all.